Good morning, this is Jeremy. It's Sunday, April the 5th. Uh, we're in Toronto. It's a beautiful day. Uh, our city is still in lockdown over the COVID-19 virus, uh, but we're going to uh, move ahead here. Today I'd like to talk to you about amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation is one of the oldest types of modulation. It's been around for a long time. Uh, broadcasters originally used AM and AM is still in use today. It has many uh, good properties. And it also forms a building block for many modulation schemes as well, so it's good to study. So I'm going to look here at chapter 6 from my ebook, Learn Telecommunications by Simulation. And there we have the equation here, equation 6.1 of amplitude modulation. We have a carrier wave, sine omega ct with amplitude ac. And its, mod its amplitude is modulated or multiplied by 1 plus am sine omega mt. So am times sine omega mt, that's called the modulating wave. It's usually a, a much lower frequency and it's added to um, 1 and multiplies the, the amplitude of the carrier wave. Another way to look at this is the amplitude of the carrier wave is 1 plus m, where m is the modulation index here, and it's equal to the amplitude of the modulating wave divided by the amplitude of the carrier, and it's always less than 1. If m uh, is greater than 1, what happens is you have distortion and you can't recover the original modulated wave. Now m, uh, let's say m has its maximum value of 1, sine goes from plus 1 to minus 1. So it turns out then that this wave has a maximum value of 2 and a minimum value of minus 2. So let's look at Psychos Lab uh, and we're going to build AM modulation using Psychos Lab in the editor and then we'll look at Psychos which is a visual component to Psychos Lab and we'll see how we can build AM modulation in that as well. So let's go to uh, Psychos Lab and here, um, here I've got a simple um, routine in here which I've entered into the editor. So the first thing I did here is I put some comments, AM modulation. Two forward slash bars means a comment and it's not taken into consideration by the program. Uh, I've also put uh, my initials in the date. Okay, so it's always good to comment your code and when it was done. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a simple example here. We're going to use a carrier wave of 10 cycles and we're going to use a modulation wave of one cycle. Okay, so we're going to define the carrier wave first. Again, a comment here. So I've defined the carrier wave frequency to be 10. Now the angular frequency for every cycle of the carrier, you're going to go through two pi radians. Okay, so the angular frequency then is Fc times 2 pi. Now remember for pi in Psychos Lab, the symbol is percent pi. Uh, I'm going to define the amplitude to be equal to 1. Now, to draw a graph and to do this, we have to establish t. Now, t um, is the time. Okay, so we're going to start t at zero. Now, we have to. We want some granularity here. If we make t, t too big, we won't see the sine wave. So we have to uh, make t fairly small, the increments in time. So let's say we're going to go. We're going to start at zero. We're going to increment by 0 0.01, which is one hundredth of a second. And we're going to go up to five seconds. So that's t. Here, yc, that's equal to the amplitude times sine of omega ct. That's our carrier wave. SCF equals zero. We're going to define our first graph. That just means the first graph. And we're going to plot t versus yc. So then we're going to look at the carrier wave. And on top of that, we're going to look at the modulation wave. So the next thing we do here is we define the modulation wave. Modulation frequency is 1. Modul angular modulation frequency is 2 pi times fm. Let's call the amplitude f 0.5 and there's the equation for the uh, modulating wave am times sine omega mt. We can also define the modulation index as am over ac. Okay, So let's plot t and ym. Now this will go on top of this plot as well. Then finally, what we want is we want our modulated wave. So there's the equation, 1 plus m, the modulation index, times ym, uh, times yc. Now, here's a tricky part. Uh, we, we can't just put in multiplication symbol because we're talking about two vectors. 
And what we want to do is we want the component of uh, this vector to multiply the similar component of this vector. If I don't put the uh, decimal before the um, star sign, what happens is every component of this multiplies each component of that, which is not what we want. We want a component by component multiplication. That's why we have to have this special symbol in here, point star. And then we're going to establish a new graph, SCF1, and then we're going to plot T and the modulated wave. So let's run that and see what happens. Okay, so we get two graphs. Now the first graph, what we see here in the first graph, is uh, we can expand that by clicking on there. So let's just expand that there. So there's our carrier wave. It goes from plus one to minus one. Okay, and there's several cycles of that. Now, uh, for one cycle, uh, sorry, and then this is the modulating wave. This carrier wave is at uh, 10 cycles per second, and this is at one cycle per second. So uh, during one cycle of this, I should see 10 cycles of that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's exactly right. Okay, so that's the modulating wave, and that's the carrier wave. Note that it only goes from plus 0.5 to minus 0.5. Uh, because we set the amplitude at 0.5. And what happens here is when you modulate these two waves together, you get a carrier wave, and the top and the bottom, you see, follow the pattern of the modulating wave. So there's the modulating wave on the top amplitude and modulating wave on the bottom amplitude. Let's decrease uh, the amplitude of the modulating wave. Let's make it 0.25 save that and run it and see what happens now let me close the graphs as well okay they're closed so let's run that so now you see the modulation is not as deep okay the modulating wave only goes from 0.25 to minus 0.25 and then the modulated wave now you can barely see the modulation on the top and the bottom so it's got a very low modulation index and now let's go all the way let's go to one we wouldn't want to go for more than that because then we'll distort the wave. So we'll go to 1.0. All right. Save that and run it. And now what we see is we see that the modulating wave and the carrier, uh, they both go to 1. Okay. And now there's the modulated wave. So you have a, uh, the carrier gets cut off there at 100% modulation. If you go beyond that, then you get distortion which is what we don't want. All right, so that's looking at it in um, the editor. Now let's see if we can build it in um, Psychos Lab, or Psychos, which is a visual toolbox. So then we're gonna load, we have to load the ModNum toolbox because we've got some special functions in there. And then we open Psychos. And let's open a pre-built file that I have, amtone. And let's see what I've got here. Uh, we want to fill the screen properly, so let's say fill fit diagram. Okay. So what have we got here? We've got the same type of thing here. Uh, this is my information signal. I've got a sign generator. I'm multiplying it by the modulation index, and then I'm adding it to one, and then I'm multiplying it by the carrier uh, sine wave, and then I'm going to look at it on a scope. And I'm also going to look at it on a spectrum analyzer. If we go back to the original uh, ebook here for a second, notice that when you multiply two cosine waves together, let's say cosine A times cosine B is equal to the sum of cosine A plus B plus cosine A minus B over 2. So in other words, when you multiply two cosine waves together, you get the sum of the sum components, sum of the frequencies, and the sum of the different, the sum of the cosine of the difference uh, frequency. Okay, so you get the sum of the difference, and that's what we're going to see with the spectrum analyzer. Uh, under diagram, I've got this thing called context. Now, context is basically a script file where you define all your variables, Let's, just like you did in the editor. So you don't have to keep clicking in these boxes to change the values. What you do is you set them up in here in the context. So just like I did in the editor. 
I'm setting up the modulation and index, I'm setting up the modulating frequency, I'm setting up the carrier frequency and the angular frequencies. I'm also setting up the interval of time, which I'm going to call TS here. In the previous example, it was 0.01 second. Now I'm just calling it TS. Um, okay, so you're setting up you're setting up the values in there. All right. Now, uh, when you run this, uh, execute this block diagram, all these things are defined. Um, like for instance, if I open up M, it's a constant. I've put a variable in there of M. Where do I get these particular blocks from? Well. You get the blocks from, uh, let's open up a new file here. I'll just show you where you get the blocks from. So I'm going to open up a new file. And I'll just show you where you get the blocks from. So palette, you open palette, uh, palette tree. So under sources, we'll find our constant. So there's our constant there. And then we can go in there and set that as M. Um, we can also find the sine wave in there. Uh, where is it? There's our sine generator. Okay. Um, and for sinks, we'll find the scope. M scope is when you have more than one trace. And then we want uh, a linear, we want an adder. So that's a linear operation. So we'll find the adder in there. And then we want a multiplier, which is a nonlinear operation. So that's the multiplier there. OK, and then to find the, um, the spectrum analyzer is very useful. So that is in the modem toolbox. So we go down here for the mod num toolbox and we'll find the spectrum analyzer. It'll be under uh, sinks. There's the FFT. It's called the FFT, Fast Fourier Transform. So th those are the various blocks that we'll use. How do you hook them up? Well, let's say, for instance, we want to uh, add one to a sign generator. So then we just click here and we click there. OK. And let's say I wanted to add one to it. Put the one down here. Whoops. Just hit escape. Move this down here. Move my mouse over here. Whoops. Move that there. Click on here. There we go. Click there. And then click there. OK, so then that's one added to the sinusoid. And then if I wanted to put it into the multiplier, I can put that there, etc. So that's how you join these things together. Let's open up our file again. And let's open up this one. Okay, so that's the thing fully built. And let's uh, run it and see what happens. Now, in this particular case, I've set this generator at, uh, instead of 10 cycles, I've set it at, I think it's 10 kilohertz. And I've set this thing at 1 kilohertz. So let's run this thing. So we'll run it. OK, so let's look at the, the first graph here. The first graph here, um, what we're looking at is, let's expand this just to see what we're looking at here. OK, so there's the modulating signal. That's the modulating signal at 1 kilohertz. And we can see we've got 100% modulation. That's the modulated carrier. And let's look at the spectrum. So there's the spectrum. And we can expand this. OK, so, um, so there's the spectrum. So. Um, there's the carrier frequency at 1 kilohertz. I think I said 10 kilohertz earlier on. The carrier frequency 1 kilohertz. And there's the upper side band, which is the 1 kilohertz plus 100 hertz. Remember we said that this, they multiply two sine waves together. You get the sum of the difference. So there's the upper side band at 1.1 kilohertz. And that's the lower side band. OK, so let's uh, change the modulation index and let's see what happens. 
All right, so I can go into my context here and I've set my modulation index at 1.0. Let's put it at 0.5 and see what happens. Okay, so that's my modulation index at 0.5. What we expect to happen now is we don't have as much modulation and the uh, some of the difference components will have less power. So let's run this. So let's look at the um, this graph here. So notice there's not as much modulation now. Okay, it doesn't go. It doesn't pinch down to zero there because we've only got uh, m equals 0.5. There's my modulating wave. It goes from plus 0.5 to minus 0.5. And if we look at the spectrum, we see that there's less power on the sidebands now because the modulation index is lower or the power of the modulation waveform is lower. So there's my carrier wave at 1 kilohertz, and that's my lower sideband and my upper sideband. So what we've shown today then is we've had a brief look at amplitude modulation, and we looked at how we can build it in PsychoSlab and also how we can use the block editor in the ModNum toolbox to build it in Psychos, so we can build it both ways.